Honorable Speaker, sir, I also rise to take part in this special motion brought by Sri Charles Marangam to discuss the second phase of interstate boundary settlement between Meghalaya and Assam and the need of reviewing the MOU signed between the two Chief Ministers. Sir, the issue of boundary dispute has been a long pending issue that has been lingering around in the state. We cannot forget the legacy of our leaders who has fought tirelessly for attaining our statehood way back in the 60s and the 70s. The slogan during that time is that we want Hill State, no Hill State, no rest. We still remember great leaders under the banner of NVDA, Nonviolent Direct Action, like late Captain W.S. Sangma, H.R.S.T.D. Nicholas Roy, late B.B. Lindo, Edwinson Barrett, H.S. Lindo, T.R. Kandia, and so many great leaders who has fought to attain a full-fledged statehood within a state. And it was in the 24th of December 1969 that the Assam Reorganization Meghalaya Act 1969, where a provisional legislative assembly was passed. It is like a Christmas gift in that year. And the inauguration for the autonomous state was on the 2nd April 1970. And the full-fledged state was announced on 10 November 1970, and the inauguration for a full-fledged statehood on 21st January 1972. That is the turning point, and as I have said in my opening remark, we cannot forget the legacy of these great leaders who has fought for our state. But still, this issue is still there, till now. Consecutive government have tried their level best. But I want to place on record that it is only this government in MDA 1 that has taken a serious step to try and resolve this issue. So this issue is not an easy task for any government, but step has been taken. Drastic step has been taken, regional committee has been formed under the chairmanship of the cabinet minister of different regional committee that we have. But still, claim and counterclaim between the two states, it is there. As per the survey map of 1872-1929 and the notification of 1878-1925 that it is stand of the government of Meghalaya. And the government of Assam it stand as per the Chandra Chut Committee. It was with regard to the issue of settle in the first phase, where six areas of difference has been discussed. And different regional committee has submitted their recommendation that have been duly considered by the state government. I'm not saying that it has fulfilled 100 out of 100. Statement has been made in the past on the floor of the House, be it the give and take policy, whether we are gaining some, we are losing some. But the principal stand is that we should 
not, we should not lose a single inch. That is a principal stand. But in due course of discussion and deliberation, push and pull, the ups and downs is always there, where successive government has to follow in due course of time. The dispute within the boundary, which has been discussed in the phase one, there are plenty of incidents that has happened in the past, not only in the state of Meghalaya, in the state of Mizoram in the year 1994-2007 and even on 26th of July 2021, even in the state of Nagaland also, many incidents has happened even in the state of Arunachal also, and even in the state of Meghalaya also. Even myself and different legislators from Ribhoi, we have been witnessed by ourselves the incident that has happened in Yongkuli, which is not in the list of the area of difference. That's why I'm telling you the Mr. Deputy Speaker, sir, that the push and pull claim, counterclaim will always be there. But I have seen the seriousness of the government to try and solve, to take everybody on board, the traditional head, the district council, different villages, and in due course of process, we have seen in the past also incident has happened. Be it in Langpi, be it in Ribhoi, be it in <coughs> Block 2, be it in Block 1, in other part of the area of difference. But keeping in mind that in the process to discuss for the second phase, it is very important that we have to deliberate thoroughly. In the first phase, whatever the government, the regional committee have tried, the level best. And we have seen the result. There are discontentment in few sectors, in few sections, but that has to be addressed. And I hope the MOU that has been signed for active consideration for the Home Ministry, if there is any issue that has to be discussed, we'll leave it to the Honorable Chief Minister to consider. With regard to the second phase of talk for the remaining six areas of difference, with the long porous border of Assam, especially the sensitive part of Langpi, Block 1, Block 2, this Domria, and other part, we would like to stress upon or stand is that we have to regain back, especially with special reference to Block 2 area, where the Sinjuk Irangba Shnong border area right now, they have also right to the government also, claiming the stand about the 18 villages plus another four villages which is very much part and parcel of Ragnong Tung, Himak Hairim, Ribhoi District. In the letter also, they have stated very clearly that 18 villages that has to be included, including the another four on the Meghalaya, where these villages has to be retransferred to Meghalaya, as per that notification, number TADR 3150-149, date 13 April 1951, where they were in the Elsewild, Jainta Hills, where they have been transferred to Mikir Hills. Now, talk has to be there to retransfer 
and to do away with this notification so that our people who reside there, they can be included within our state. Keeping in mind different parameters that are there, those five parameters, we have to see each and every village. Keeping in mind the settlement who are there also. I have the list of these villages of this block two village where we can see the number of population. For example, Madan Umwang, indigenous tribe are 721, and non-indigenous tribe are 1,400. Umla Per, indigenous tribe are 325, non-indigenous people are 3,020 and so on. Keeping in mind different activities, different issues that are there in the second phase by taking everybody on board, the traditional heads, the district council, MLAs, and other stakeholders, civil society, NGO. And we hope that in days to come, in the process to discuss the boundary issue in the second phase, I hope that the manner the government has taken a serious note in the first phase that has been discussed and elaborated in the past two years. The seriousness that are there, we hope that under the leadership of Honorable Chief Minister or the Cabinet Minister, concerned legislator, that the second phase of talk will be there by taking everybody on board and we hope to see that this problem which has been lingering for so long, it will be solved once and for all. Keeping in mind and sincere request to each and every stakeholder also, civil society, the public at large, to work together, keeping aside political affiliation, keeping aside politics, this is the issue of life and death for the people of our state. Let us keep aside our personal feeling. Let us walk by the brain, not by the heart. And we would like to see in days to come, the house, we will be unanimous as we have passed the resolution for attaining ILP on the 19th of December 2019, as we have passed the resolution for the inclusion of Khasi language and Garo language in the 8th schedule on 27 November 2018. The same spirit has to be there to work together, all the 60 legislators, all the stakeholders, so that we can carry on the legacy, the name and fame of our great leaders who have led us from the front. And we hope that in days to come, that the issue of boundary, we can solve once and for all. Thank you so much, sir, for allowing me to take part in this very important special motion. Thank you. I resume my seat. Thank you.